A few months ago, I received a call from an unknown number. At first, I thought it was someone calling by mistake, and I ignored it. But the calls continued. One day I answered the phone and asked, Who is this? A man responded, Are you curious about who I am? Everyone who knows my identity will die. I angrily responded, Hey, and people who prank call me, I will also kill. But he ignored me and continued talking. Come out to the front of your yard, of your house, at midnight. Then you will know who I am. I got annoyed, so I just hung up. But the calls kept coming, so I blocked the number. A few days later, I received a call from another unknown number, and I heard the same man's voice. I got angry and cussed him out. Then he said, Do not be angry. If you get angry, you'll get cancer. His prank calls continued for weeks, and eventually I got so angry that when he called one night, I immediately yelled at him. I'm going to come to you right now, and I'm going to rip off all your fingers so you won't be able to dial the phone. Oh, calm down. The human body is precious. I'm in a white van on 5th Street. Come to me. The phone suddenly hung up. No matter how much I thought about who was making the prank call, no one came to mind. I was so angry that I decided to go see the guy and show him how scary my fists could be. I called my friends, Carlos and Mason. It was at night, and these two, for a lack of a better term, were tough guys, sturdy young men, if you know what I mean, who had nothing to fear. When we arrived on 5th Street, there was no one to be seen, but there, in the middle of the street, was parked a large white van. However, the tinted windows were so dark, we couldn't see inside. We yelled at the van. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, get out of here. Here. And that's when we got a call. And there and then I heard it, that familiar voice. Mm, three precious items delivered to me. I could not be more happy right now. My friends, they went to the van pressed their faces against the windows, and tried to look inside. At that moment, a window rolled down, and two muscular arms as thick as pumpkins appeared and hit Carlos and Mason in the face, causing them to fall backwards, like helpless dolls. With a loud thud, they hit the ground, twisted like squids. Then the large man loaded Carlos and Mason into the van and drove off. Everything happened so quickly, as if it all happened within three seconds or so. I quickly called the police, but the van had no numbers on the license plate. The police searched for the van, but it was nowhere to be found. I was in a huge panic, and I was shaking uncontrollably all night long. The next day, I got another call from an unknown number. It was him. Oh, I was surprised. The items were in better condition than I expected. Carlos has a crystal clean liver, and Mason has very hearty, healthy kidneys. Thanks to these, I earned $100,000. Now, let's have a party. Come to me. You know the place where we met yesterday. Come at 10 o'clock tonight. Your friends, they are still here, but a little indisposed. Kind of having trouble breathing. <laughs> I started crying. I swore at him, but then he hung up. I called the police and told them about the call and the location. Then at 10 p.m., I went back to 5th Street. However, the van that was there quickly sped off as soon as the police pulled up. They took off and chased the van. A couple hours later, I got the call. It was him. Oh, I really want those prime organs of the policemen who are following me right now. I'm sure I can sell them all. <laughs> A few days later, the police station contacted me. They told me that the police officers who had chased the van that day had gone missing. I was speechless. I was in shock. A few days later, I received a text message from an unknown number with a photo attached. In the photo, there were men lying on an operating table, and next to them were men wearing surgical gowns and masks, holding tens of thousands of dollars in an open briefcase. The message read, sold to police officers. 
I was so scared out of my mind. I begged my parents to move away, right away. My parents, they also felt the seriousness of the situation. And so within weeks, we moved away. And at the same time, I changed my phone number. I was so relieved that I was now free from those calls from that man. But one day, I saw a white van parked in front of the house I moved to. It was stopped there for some time, and then it drove off. The next day, I went to view the spot where the van was standing, and there, on the ground, was a photograph. I picked it up to get a closer look. There in the photo were two unknown people, but written on the bottom of the pic was Carlos and Mason saved two lives. The shock shook me to my core. A few weeks later, on the evening news, a report came the organ harvesters had been caught. However, the bodies of Carlos and Mason were never found. Still to this day, I continue to suffer from severe trauma. Luckily, the prank calls had stopped. But still, the inner panic was always on, 24 hours a day. Six months have passed since the incident, but what is still scary is that a van without license plates still appears in front of my house from time to time. Every time that van appears, a rotten smell emanates within the air. Police continue to search for the vans, but with no luck and no clue of identities. I no longer leave the house without extreme fear of what could happen to me.